This video will illustrate the method that is used in the integration methodology step of using trigonometric substitution to solve a problem. So remember, in the problem solving technique, this is now step six, trigonometric substitution. And trigonometric substitution, it turns out, is the longest method in the course. And so it is really important that you exhaust all of the previous five methods. So that is, you're looking for power rules, you're looking for simple substitution, looking for a function differential relationship that might be in the question. You're also, um, you've decided that this is not a standard form. It's not a standard log, exponential, or trigonometric form. Um, if there are trigonometric functions in the problem, you can't use identities uh, to simplify the, the question. And it doesn't lead to inverse sine or inverse tan. So that means that you've exhausted those possibilities, you've examined them and uh, have discarded them as being methods to solve this question. So what you use trigonometric substitution on are differences or sums of squares that you see inside the integral. So these are differences or sums of squares that you haven't been able to solve in any other way. What you're going to do is you're going to introduce a trigonometric function into the integral that typically doesn't have any trigonometric relations in it. By doing trigonometric substitution, you're going to replace for the variable, and you're going to replace that variable with a specific trigonometric relation that is um, going to simplify the question for you. And so every time you use trigonometric substitution, the result will be it'll take that difference or sum of squares and with the specific trigonometric relation that you have chosen it will reduce the difference or sum of squares to a single term and so when you have two terms in the uh, in the denominator of a fraction um, by reducing it to one, suddenly that opens up a whole lot of algebraic avenues of possibly solving the problem. Um, also, if you have a difference or sum of squares that is inside of a square root, typically what happens is uh, you reduce the difference or sum of squares to a single square term, and if that happens to be inside of a square root, then it will eliminate the square root for you. So it actually eliminates that uh, point of contention that problem um, when you have to solve the integral. So here's the danger. Because every difference or sum of squares can be solved with trigonometric substitution, there's a tendency for students to over-identify this method. So you have to make sure that you uh, have exhausted the possibility of it being a integration leading to inverse sine or inverse tan, because even though the those integrals can also be solved with trigonometric substitution, trigonometric substitution is much longer than that method. So make sure you um, have identified that the other methods don't apply. So here are the steps in trigonometric substitution. The first step, you've uh, identified that you've got a, a difference or sum of squares that is in the problem. And so depending on which pattern of the difference or sum of squares that you see, you're going to use a different substitution. So if you happen to see the difference of squares a squared minus u squared. This is specifically a difference of squares where the number comes first and u is a function and it comes second. So u is a function of x, 
A is a constant, any number. So if you see a difference of a number minus a square function, then you can do this replacement. Let u equal a sine theta. Now what that's going to do is it will, when you substitute u as a sine theta, you're going to end up with a squared minus a squared sine squared. And you'll factor out the a squared, and you'll be left with 1 minus sine squared, which you might recognize as Pythagoras' theorem identity. It will always reduce this difference of squares to a single term. If you see uh, the opposite, where you see u squared minus a squared, so it's still a difference of squares, but the function comes first and constant comes second, then the substitution you use there is let u equal a secant theta. And if you see the sum of squares, and in this case it doesn't actually matter what order they're in, a squared plus u squared is identical to u squared plus a squared, in that situation you will use the substitution let u equal a tangent theta. So you're going to insert into the question where there was a difference or sum of squares, you're going to insert one of these three trigonometric relations. So now you actually substitute the function u that you've determined is the appropriate one to use, but you also have to make sure that you substitute for its differential. This is very similar to a um, simple substitution. You substitute for both the function and its differential. This is going to replace for the variable x in your integral and the differential dx. So if your substitution was, for example, u equals 4 sine theta, then du must be 4 cosine theta d theta. You use those to replace for your variable x in your relationship and its differential dx. A good way to check that you are doing this correctly is after you have done the trigonometric substitution, you should notice that the two coefficients that are in the difference or sum of squares, the coefficients that result after substitution will always be the same. They have to be the same because you need to factor out this common factor so that it will take the difference of squares and reduce it to something simpler. So if those two numbers don't match up, you have made a mistake. Um, or you have misidentified what the substitution must be. You simplify that sum or difference of squares. So because the two coefficients will match up, you're going to factor that coefficient out, and you will be left with a simpler sum or difference of squares that actually is an identity that we have seen before. So you, you reduce the integral using algebra, and standard trigonometric identities that we've discussed previously, you're always going to end up with a Pythagoras theorem identity. So those two identities are sine squared plus cos squared of an angle theta equals 1, or tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared of an angle. So your sum or difference of squares, you'll be able to use one of these two identities rearranged and you'll be able to simplify the difference or sum of squares into one single term. What you should have at this stage is a trigonometric integral, an integral that contains trigonometric functions. So now we have to start over. We have to start over. We've, we've basically rewritten the problem. Now it's in terms of a trigonometric relation. So now you solve this by the standard techniques. You go back to step one and you go through all your techniques that might be able to solve this question. It could be a simple substitution. It could be a standard form. It could be uh, an integral that you have to use trigonometric identities. Ulti ultimately, you take this trigonometric integral and solve it by any method that you can. Now we have a solution. 
So we have a solution from the integral, but it's in terms of the wrong variable. It'll be in terms of angle theta. So our solution will be in terms of angle theta, not the variable that we started out with. So we have to undo this trigonometric substitution. And the way that we do this is we draw a right triangle that corresponds to the ratio of your original trigonometric substitution. And so once you've identified what the sides are in your triangle, you're going to have to find any missing sides that you might have with Pythagoras theorem because it's a right triangle and you've got two of the sides from your ratio the third side will always be able to be determined from Pythagoras theorem. Um, what you will also find is that the difference or sum of squares that you originally had in the original integral it's going to appear here. It's going to appear in that missing side found from Pythagoras theorem. So if you don't see that original difference or sum of squares, you've probably made an error. So this is a good check that you're following the right procedure. So here is an example. Um, let's say your integral contained nine minus x squared. Now, um, we're not going to solve a specific integral. This is just showing you what the procedure is. This is a difference of squares. So you can compare this to the form a squared minus u squared. And it has to match up to this exactly where the number is the first in the difference of squares and the function is the second part. Your original substitution then, if we use, if we see a squared minus u squared, we are commanded to use the substitution u equals a sine theta. But you can see that the 9 here is the number a squared. So a has to be equal to 3. And the x squared has to be the same as u squared. So that means that u must be x. So if we put those two together, the substitution is supposed to be u equals a sine theta. Therefore, our substitution must be x equals 3 sine theta. When we do our differential, of course, it would be dx equals 3 cos theta d theta, and then you do your substitution. The whole point is you do your substitution, you end up with your uh, trigonometric integral, you'll have some kind of trigonometric integral, you'll solve it, and then you have to undo your answer. And the way that you undo your answer is from this original substitution. So when we get to this stage, we've solved the integral, and we want to go back to our original substitution, we have to draw a triangle that corresponds to this original substitution. So if you look, x equals 3 sine theta, if you rearrange for sine theta, you end up with x divide by 3. The ratio of sides that is the sine function is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we sketch a right triangle, so that's a triangle with a 90 degree corner, the opposite side to our relevant angle, and I'm going to assume that the angle of interest is going to be down here. So if this is my angle theta, the opposite side of that is going to be located over here. And so the opposite side has to be x. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, so that side has got to be 3. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta is x divided by 3. The missing side can be found from Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem states that the sum of the squares of the two short sides equals the square of the hypotenuse. So if I take the square of the hypotenuse, 3 squared is 9, 
and subtract the square of the side that I know, x squared. 9 minus x squared, if I take the square root of that, it should give me the remaining side. And you'll notice that the 9 minus x squared that we have in the third missing side, that is the same difference of squares that I had originally in the integral. And so you'll always be able to find that pattern, that the missing side has the original difference or sum of squares that you started with. So we've now solved the problem and we've got in our triangle the missing all the sides that are in that triangle are known. So what we have to do is we take our answer, our solution for the trigonometric integral is going to contain trigonometric functions typically. We need to then determine what those trigonometric ratios are from our triangle. You just read them off of that triangle we just built. So if I need tan theta in my solution, I would just read opposite over adjacent for that triangle. If I needed secant theta, I would read hypotenuse divide by adjacent and uh, substitute that into my solution. So from that triangle, you find any missing trigonometric function that is in your solution, and then you substitute it into the solution and simplify. And so when you substitute that into the solution, you'll be back in terms of your original variable. So at this stage, we will have the actual solution to the problem. Okay, so here's the, the final caveat. This is a long method. It is the longest method in this course. It will therefore likely only be required by a small number of questions on an exam because it takes so long. But the danger is because it um, can be used in so many ways because every problem that contains a difference or sum of squares that can be solved in other methods can also be solved with trigonometric substitution. It's just that now a question that might take three minutes or five minutes is now going to take 20 minutes with trigonometric substitution. So make sure that you have not misidentified this um, a question that can be solved by some easier method. Make sure you've got the right method um, and then use trig trigonometric substitution if you have to.